Well, I must have did something on Facebook to make them upset because they won't let me upload my teachings. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I'd like for us to set the tone for these meetings. Um, you know, the Bible says when two or more gathered that Jesus is in the midst. Amen? Amen. We want that. And that means whatever he can do will be present if we'll believe. And then the Bible also says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, says to desire the supernatural. How many desire the supernatural? I want to just not have it occasionally. I want it to live in it. But especially in these services, we want to see God do whatever he wants to do. Amen. I noticed that um, I used to wonder, I said, Lord, how come I go to one church? I'll just, it'll just flow and I'll see miracles. And I'm going to share a couple with you real quick here. We've had just the last month. Uh, and then other churches where I, I can't seem like there's just nothing there. And he said, this is what the people want. So if you hunger, amen. We was down in South Louisiana in Homa. And uh, we did a tent revival there. And I'm telling you the truth. I don't know of any person we prayed for that didn't get healed. Amen. I mean that. And it started off with this lady. She came. She was in such terrible pain. She had a cane. And I recognized her. Uh, she was a member of that church. And the um, pastor come and got me before the service started. We went back to her. And she was just bent over in pain. And began to pray for her. And I watched as the Lord healed her right in front of my eyes. She, she went from being bent over. She kind of twisted that way and came up straight. And when she did, you could just see it, let, it left her. Amen. And she started shouting. Well, the pastor took the cane and hung it in the tent on a pole. <laughs> and she didn't need it anymore. She came the rest of the service and told the heal. Then in a, a, a little town called Dulac, <laughs> That's a bayou. Uh, we were doing a revival, and the last night, this lady, oh, there were several testimonies that night, but I'll share just one. This lady came up. She told me later that her daughter talked her into coming. So talk people into coming, because this lady got a miracle. As she came up for prayer, she started telling me what was wrong with herself, and after about seven or eight things, <laughs> I said, hold on, you just need healing from the top of your head to your feet, amen? Yeah. And so I began to pray for her, and I watched as the Holy Spirit came on her. And it'd be hard to describe everything that happened. I mean, it's like she just went into another realm. And they finally had to get a seat because they got tired of trying to hold her up and got a seat for her and, and let her sit down and, and the Lord just you could see God on her and after it was over she came to me and said when you prayed I felt a whirlwind come inside of me and it was like a twister going around inside of me and I felt it was just cleaning me out of everything Amen. Whew, I've never heard of people getting healed by a twister yeah. <laughs> Elijah got picked up by a whirlwind though didn't he yeah. <laughs> amen so these are exciting times. I feel we've entered into a great move of God that's begun. How many of you sense that? And, you know, Satan's fought really hard to try to stop it. But he's, got, he's failing and he's going to fail. Amen. In fact, the very effort that he's putting forth to try to shut down. I mean, there's a church up in... Um, Canada, where they didn't just close it and put a padlock on the door, they built a fence and put barbed wire on it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the next, at least the people weren't in the church when they did that. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows how far away that could be. Yeah. But you know, I got thinking about all that's been happening, you know, and especially last year, not, it's, it's easing up this year, but how many places you couldn't go in without a mask? Couldn't buy or sell. Change one letter in the word mask. The S to R, what do you get? Hello. Can't buy or sell without a mark. 
Well, you know, the devil's, the devil's creating fear through all this stuff. Yeah. And you got to realize we're not wrestling flesh and blood. The devil uses people, but he's behind it all. And he's trying to man manipulate us through fear. And I want to talk to you about that this morning. So if you have your Bible, would you open to Luke chapter 21? God doesn't want any of his people to have fear. And you can deal with it. I have. The Lord show has showed me how. And I'm going to give you three basic things this morning that will help you. Look at verse 25 of Luke 21. He says, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and on the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear. Do you know fear can cause you to die? Cause you to have heart attacks, strokes. That's how powerful fear is. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, I believe those powers he's talking about here is Satan's power in the heavens. God's going to shake. God is shaking them. That's why Satan's so afraid right now. He knows he's in that period where God's judgments are coming into the earth. And we're going to see more. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't see anything happening. But it is. Amen. God works in the unseen world. Whoever wins the battle in the heavens determines what happens here on the earth. God can change a whole atmosphere over a city, a town, a person, by what happens above them in the spiritual realm. Amen. Amen. The reason darkness comes is through sin. Satan begins to move in, brings darkness, spiritual darkness. But I have found whenever, especially when I've been overseas, whenever you preach the gospel, the atmosphere changes. Did you get that? The atmosphere you're in changes when the word of God is spoken. Amen. That's why Satan tries to stop it so much. He wants to sh shut the mouths of God's people. Amen. So we're living in that time. Fear. Now, what is fear? you got to realize that everything that God did was perfect. Everything. But when Satan came in, he brought what is called reciprocals. How many know what a reciprocal is? It is something that's the same except opposite. What is the opposite of love? Hate. It's a reciprocal. It's called perverted. What would be the opposite of faith? Fear. Faith is believing for what you hope for, or what, which means an expectation. Here he says, fear of those things they're expecting to happen. Think about it. Now, fear always has to do with the bad, doesn't it? Isn't that what Satan's best at? Bringing the bad? Coming to steal, to kill, to destroy? Yeah. Well, I want us to look at a man, a very popular man in the Bible named Job. Would you go back to the book of Job with me? And let's go to chapter 3. Job was truly an amazing man. And I, in reading it, I, I get fascinated. And, and as over the years when I study it, I found out that Job was a type of Jesus. And you think, well, how can that be? Well, Jonah was a type of Jesus, wasn't he? Jesus said he was. Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of the fish. And so was Jesus three days and nights in the belly of the earth. Well, Job lost everything. Huh? Yeah. Jesus gave up everything. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Why did he give it up? So that you could be redeemed and receive an inheritance. Yeah. Now, look what Job says here in verse number 25. 
For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. So the things that happened to Job did not come because he had missed God. Because he wasn't a good man. Because God bragged on him. Think about it. God bragged on Job on what an honest and good man he was. But yet these evil things happened to him. Think about that. Job feared God. But Job really didn't know God. And I want you to listen to me real carefully. One of the things that you and I must come to know about God. Is not only that he is love. Because he is. But he is very merciful. How many know that David the psalmist talked about the mercies of God. And he said, they endure for how long? Forever. In fact, Isaiah prophesied about the sure mercies of David. Amen. If you do not understand the character of God, you will not trust him like you can and need to. Understanding God's character is so important. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how can I understand your character more? He said, son, that's a very easy question to answer. He said, read the life of my son while he walked on this earth. Because he hasn't changed. Are you out there? Can you name me one person Jesus ever turned away that came to him? Huh? You can't name one, can you? Because no one that ever came to Jesus did he ever turn away. Do you think he's changed and will turn you away? No. It's understanding his character in nature. There are so many times where it said, And Jesus moved with compassion. Reach out and touch them. A leper. A blind man. He was moved with compassion. And I will tell you that same Jesus is available to you and to me. And when you understand that, so many times, the Lord showed me, He said, Son, you, you need to understand, I'm not a hard God. Are you out there? Folks, if He was, there's a lot of wicked people out there that'd be dead. Yeah. It shows how merciful He is, even to the wicked. Yeah. We must understand how much he loves us. Amen. That's so important. Now Job went on and look what else he said here in the next verse. I am not at ease. I am not quiet. I have no rest for trouble comes. How many know fear will not give you any rest? Fear will not let you be at ease. It keeps you on edge. And that's how Job, bless his heart, that's how he was living. <laughs> but something God said, you know, when Satan challenged him and said, yeah, well, Job just served you because you bless him so much. He said, to take it away. And, of course, God's, God's not a taker away, people. Satan said, take it away and he'll curse you. But you remember what God said to him? He said, behold, he's in your hands. What put Job in Satan's hands right here is fear. Fear is not trust. Fear, I am determined, opens the door to the enemy. Look at Proverbs 29. And verse number 25. It says, the fear of man brings a snare. A snare. You know what a snare is? You, you know, they used to set traps. Well, when an animal stepped in it, it snared him, it caught him, took him captive, and they couldn't get free. The fear of man will bring a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. He shows the opposite here of trust and fear. Fear brings a snare. 
Trust brings safety. How many of you see that? Oh, that's so good. Praise God. Now, look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. And look at verse 25. I want to show you the root of fear. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hmm. Fear has its roots in self-preservation. Now, we all want to be preserved, right? <laughs> Not like jelly or something. That's what he's talking about. We want to be safe. Amen. From harm, evil. But how many know fear? Fear of the unknown, fear of darkness. Why are we afraid? Of, why are some people afraid of darkness? Because you can't see what's there. Isn't that true? Yeah. How I many you know that disease walks in darkness? Huh? You, can, you don't know where it is. Can't see germs. <laughs> but fear. And Satan, that's Satan's biggest tool. And it's going to be a big one in these last days. And you need to understand that Satan wants to manipulate people and you through fear. But how many know God didn't give us a spirit of fear? He told that to Timothy. He said, Timothy, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. How many know you don't have a sound mind when you're operating in fear? You'll make, let me tell you, anytime fear is gripping you, you won't make good decisions. Amen? Fear wants you to make hasty decisions. Oh, I gotta do something now. You know what I'm talking about. And there's been a lot of fear in people lately. Hmm? Fear of death, fear of getting sick. All these things we have to deal with. Yet, yet for everything the devil is throwing at us, God has given us his word and his promise, hasn't he? Now we know. In fact, let's go and look at it. It's in 1 John chapter 4. What the Apostle John tells us about fear. What will cast it out. Verse number 18. There is no fear in Love. Well, God is love, right? So if we're in God, we're in love, there's no fear there. But perfect love casts out fear. Are you out there? Because fear involves torment. Boy, isn't that the truth? And he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. You don't love God until you find out he loves you. Huh? How much does he love you? If he was willing to give up Jesus for you, that's a lot of love. How much more will he give you all things? Think about it. So, Brother Ford, how do I get this love down in me? Well, first understanding and staying in the scriptures about God's love for you until it gets in your heart. And then start expressing that love to others. Huh? Loving others. Even those that you don't want to love. <laughs> there are times I want to tell people, I don't like you, but I love you. <laughs> huh? You ever felt that way? And really, I don't like their ways. Yeah. You don't have to love somebody's ways, but you have to love the person. You know, God loves even the most despicable people that there exist. 
and I won't say any names, but you can maybe imagine a few. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are in D.C. Yeah. <laughs> District of Corruption. We all need a good laugh once in a while. Amen. Amen. But there's a lot, I hate to say it, there's a lot of truth in that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Perfect love casts it out. It drives it out. When you know somebody cares about you, think about when you were a little child and you just depended on mom and dad for everything. There was a comfort in that. Come on, amen. amen. You know, that there's going to be food on the table. There's going to be clothes to wear. Why? Because your parents loved you. Amen. I mean, normal parents do. I know there are exceptions, but love creates comfort. It creates safety. Think about that. When you know somebody loves you. And when you know God loves you, you know he won't fail you. So many times our faith is motivated by, and I want to say this rightly, because faith without works is dead, but sometimes we think our works produce faith. Yeah. Faith produces works. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I don't know if I've heard pray hard enough. <laughs> pray hard. You ever heard that? Pray harder. <laughs> well, how hard do you have to pray? How do you know if you prayed hard enough? Huh? You know what the bottom line is? You either trust or you don't. You either trust God or you don't trust Him. If you're not trusting Him, it's because you don't know Him very well. And the only way you can know Him is through His Word. You can't know God any other way. And I will tell you something. If you're not in love with God's Word, you're not really in love with God. Oh, I know I said it, but I did. Hello. Hello. Don't say you're in love with God and you don't love His Word because you can't know Him except through His Word. And I've learned how to bathe myself in the Word of God. I just bathe in it. I'll just, you know, if there's something I'm, I, need, I need to know God about and have faith for, I'll just take, find the Scriptures and I'll just bathe myself in them over and over. I just keep bringing that Scripture over and over. You know what it does? It's washing me. It's washing me of every hindrance. So that when the enemy comes in that area, I have a shield of faith that rises up because of the word that's in my heart. It just comes up. It just, whoosh, just Satan comes with something, and the word of God just rises up and says, oh no, that's not the way it's going to be in my life. Because this is what God's word says. That's what your shield of faith is. It, it doesn't let anything in that's not of God. And the only way you know what's of God is if you know his word. And so many times, you know, we think, well, I've gone to church for a long time. I know the word. Well, do you? You really don't know what you've got until it's challenged. Hmm? You really don't know how much faith you got until it's put on the test. Yeah. <laughs> how many of you have been tested? <laughs> yeah. So you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. I don't like coming up short. <laughs> No, I don't like that at all. Now look at Isaiah 54. <clears throat> Verse number 14. Now we're going to be reading the word righteousness. And I want us to understand what that word means. It is not something you attain to. Okay? It's not something you have to work to get. It is a gift. Yeah. Hmm. It'd be just like, say you were at odds with somebody because you did something they didn't like. Okay? And you were cut off from their friendship. And one day you see this person and they say, look, I want to restore our fellowship. I forgive you for what you did to me, and I'm going to act like it never happened, and you and I are going to be friends from now on. How many know what I'm talking about? 
Mankind was cut off from God through his sin. But God sent Jesus to rectify that and allow Jesus to be punished for what you and I have done. And then looked at you and said, I am restoring everything that your forefather Adam lost in the garden. I'm going to restore it. Even better than it was. I, in fact, I'm not just going to forgive you. I am going to give you my nature. Ooh. I'm going to put my nature on the inside of you of love, joy, peace, sound mind. You're going to have my nature. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Righteousness is restoration yes. to fellowship. Amen. That's what it is. So as we read this word, we understand what he's talking about. In righteousness, in this restoration to being made right with God, you shall be established. We know what that means, fastened, <laughs> like something in concrete. Come on, amen. Yes. You will be far from oppression because you won't fear. Did you get that? Yes. You won't fear anymore. And guess what? Oppression won't be able to come. Oh, are you? Oh, Lord, that's good stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's how important it is to know that I've been made right with God. And from terror, it shall not come near you. Can you walk like that each day? Huh? I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid terror will not come near me. Hmm? Because I'm established, I'm in fellowship with God. I've been restored to fellowship with God. God is head over heels in love with me. Huh? One of the problems some people have in understanding God's love is because they don't love themselves. And some of you know I'm talking to you without pointing you out. You think, well, if I was just this or that, maybe I'd have a better relationship with God. <laughs> Forget that kind of thinking. Because yes. you're not going down the right path. Yes. God made you. He didn't make a mistake. I don't care what your wife says. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't care what your neighbor says. God didn't make a mistake. He made you just the way he wanted you. Now, it's true you've got junk in you that needs to be cleaned out, but who doesn't? Yeah. Huh? My spirit, man's been made new. My soul needs some work, and my body needs a new one. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Won't you be glad when that new one comes? Yeah. I've got one on order right now. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not dependent on FedEx either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then on the... Uh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now watch what he says. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. You know what God just told you? He said, yeah, trouble's going to come, but I won't cause it. You need to hear that. Yeah. He said, they will assemble. Yeah. He's all about the enemies. He said, but not by me. Don't ever blame God for the bad stuff. I mean, I've even heard people say, well, maybe God wants you to be sick. That's just really not smart. Yeah. Why would Jesus accept all the sickness and disease on his body when he died on the cross if he wanted you to have it? That'd be, he took all the sin of the world. Why would he want you to have sin? Huh? You see, you've got to be grounded in righteousness. Yes. You've got to know what God says is yours. If you don't know what God says is yours, you won't, you won't believe for it. Yeah. Satan will always say, well, you, you haven't attained to that place yet. It's always, you know, people say, one, one day, one day I'm going to be blessed. One day God's going to do this. One day God's going to show. You know, those people hardly ever get anything. 
Because the devil keeps them living that someday it's going to happen, you know. But it just never comes. Because faith is believing for something now. It, exi it already exists. You know, healing existed way back when Jesus died on the cross. You know, Jesus raised people from the dead. How I many you know that's more than a healing? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He goes on and he says, Behold, thy created, or excuse me, whoever assembles against you will fall for your sake. Now there's a promise right there. But how I many know a lot of times when you're in the heat of a battle and Satan's coming against you, you don't always remember these things. That's why you need to feed on the word all the time. So Holy Spirit will bring these things back to your memory. Oh, Satan's coming against you. You start to say, wait a minute, this is going to fail because God's already prophesied it right here. I claim it. Lord, I believe that what's coming against me right now will what? Fail. I don't know about you, that's good news. Repeat what God said and you'll be in good shape. Behold, I created the blacksmith, or we can say it like this, I created the devil who blows the coals in the fire or creates bad things to bring forth an instrument for his work, something to come against you with. I created the spoiler to destroy. That's what Satan does best, isn't it? But no weapon he forms against you will prosper. Oh, glory to God. God already said the devil's going to fail. What makes this work? You've got to believe it. You need to start saying it. Get it in your heart. Even the tongues and Satan, I mean, you know, he'll speak things to your mind. Which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. I believe that's what Satan was doing to Job. Constantly. That's why Job was always doing sacrifices. Because he was afraid. And he says, this is the inheritance, that's what heritage means, of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Your righteousness is from the Lord. It didn't originate with you. You've got to get that. I'm right with God, not because of what I've done, but because he loves me and I believe him. Yeah. I have received what he's done. Yeah. And you've got to start acting like you're righteous. Hmm? I remember a minister years ago who said something that went off inside my spirit. His name is Dave Roberson. He's in Tulsa. He's out of church there. I guess he's about 80 years old now. Still going strong. And he said, I found out that God treats me many times the way I think of him. And boy, I had to stop. I thought about that. Now listen, if you're always thinking God's upset and mad with you, then you're not going to get a lot from God. Not because He doesn't want you to have it, but because you're blocking Him. You've got to walk around and think that, you, that God, He says you're the apple of His eye. Whew, I'm the apple of His eye. Man, it's just so wonderful for God to love me this much. That you have favor with God and with man. You got to live that way. You ever seen people that are just real blessed and it almost makes you upset? It's because they've learned that God really loves them and they live that way. I'm righteous with God. I'm right with God. When you, It'll change your prayer life. Instead so of just, well, I hope God hears me. No, I know he hears me. Because I've been made righteous through the blood of Jesus. And you know we, we quote that scripture in Revelation 12. Where it says we overcome the devil by the blood of a lamb. And by the word of our testimony. But we a lot of times leave out that last part. And we love not our lives unto death. You know why? Because fear has been driven out of our life. And I got myself off my hands. My safety is not up to me. It's up to God. Huh? Amen. How can you not love your life to death? Because I've lost it. Yes. But I found it. Yes. Smith Wigglesworth wrote a letter one time to a man in response 
And he told him, he says, to die is to live. And I thought, Lord, I feel like I'm dying all the time. Why don't I get some life in this? <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, you die to the things of the world. You die to the lust of the flesh. You die to the lust of the mind. You die. You turn your back on all those things. And a lot of times people don't even realize where Satan's getting in at. Until God reveals it. I remember when I started praying first of this year, January. January. And part of February is always a time of fasting and praying for me every year. I start the year off that way. And I was praying. I had such a desire in my heart. I said, God, I want to be holy. I want you to purify my mind and my soul. And I want my body to be holy and pure too. And the more I prayed that, the worse I felt. In fact, I felt like a worm. I felt cruddy. You know what that word means? Nasty. Yucky. And finally I said, God, this is going the wrong way. I'm supposed to be getting holy and I'm getting worse. He said, you're not getting worse. <laughs> I said, why do I feel that way? He said, you are already that way. <laughs> yeah, I didn't laugh. <laughs> Please explain. He said, well, the closer you get to me, I'm a holy God, the more crud that's in you is exposed. But he said, son, you ask for this. This is how I get rid of it. Yeah. How many you know, for instance, my wife come in and say, did you know you had a spot on your coat? No, I can't see it. So she exposed it. Yeah. Here I'm walking around with a spot on my coat, and everybody sees me, he needs to clean his coat. And you got stuff you can't see. Yeah. But God sees it. Yeah. He has to expose it so you can choose to repent of it. Yeah. A lot of people walking around don't even know they got stuff they need to repent of. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you start praying for God to clean you up. And watch what happens. It's like being in a dark room. Say, I don't see anything bad in here. And they turn the lights on. Oh, dear Lord. Huh? That's how God works. So I accepted it. I said, all right, Lord, let's get rid of the crud. Amen. And you always have more than you think. Look at Isaiah 41. I'm just going to show you a couple more things here. Look at verse 10. Y'all circle these. And go back and look at them later. What is the first two words? Fear not. fear not. God hates fear. He doesn't want you to fear. I mean, all, all the times when Jesus would appear, you know, like when he walked in water, got in the boat, he said, be not afraid. Fear not. Angels say that whenever they appear. Fear not. For I am what? With you. <laughs> There's another fear conqueror right there when you know that God is with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Oh, thank God. Are, are you out there? Last year, when we were in Lubbock, Texas, preaching, the pastor had done a uh, funeral on Saturday. We got there on Saturday afternoon, and we sit and talk with the pastor for an over an hour. Well, he found out later that somebody gave him COVID at the funeral. And uh, he didn't know he had it till Thursday, and we're on our way home. <laughs> and we're in the trailer, and he calls me and says, he said, Bill, I'm in, I'm in the hospital. <laughs> I got COVID. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I uh, found out later 22 people got it in the church. 
And um, anyway, long story short, we're, we get home on Friday late, and um, so everything's closed. So Monday was a holiday, and so days are ticking by and feeling fine. And uh, in fact, we didn't show any symptoms, so they stuck that thing up my nose. Makes me wonder if they give it to me. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. We had I, we had no symptoms till after they stuck that thing up my nose. So this is Tuesday when they do the jab thing, and um, <laughs> and we're in our we're in our vehicle, you know. And she comes out. She's got a hazmat suit on, <laughs> you know. Hold your nose up, <clears throat> you know. And uh, so anyway, that's Tuesday. And uh, so a few days later, we get symptoms. And I'm really thinking, man, this is weird. So <clears throat> Friday, I'm sitting on the couch in my travel trailer because I don't, we don't want to go in the house because my daughter and son-in-law is living there for the third time. <laughs> Well, they sold their house and hadn't got to know what built yet, so they needed a place to stay. So anyway, so we're staying in there. I'm sitting on the couch praying, meditating. All of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes up in my spirit and says, Rise up, son, you're healed. I said, Yes, sir. I jumped off that couch and started shouting, Ooh, I'm healed, glory to God. And I was, too. All my symptoms started leaving right then. And I didn't have bad symptoms. I just felt yucky, didn't want to eat. And, uh, and I jumped, went in the bedroom. My wife's in the bed. And I said, honey, God told me I'm healed. I want you to have this too. Get up. No, I just get it here on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and you said something like that, didn't you? <laughs> and uh, well, anyway, that night, oh, bless her heart. She was so sick that night. She was just about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. She's in the bathroom there. And she's, you know what? She said she thinks her toenails came out, but, but that's how bad it was. And uh, boy, I, you know, I got to hurt. I just started hurting for my wife. I, I love my wife. She's pretty. And uh, I, outside, I'd keep her, you know. After 49 years, no need to change now, right? So I was, I was praying, and I couldn't get her healed. And I thought, Lord, I need to get my wife healed. And I was praying, and folks. I had not done this in many, 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 many years. I began to groan in spirit. It went beyond praying. I began to feel a groaning in my spirit come up out of here. And I groaned, I groaned, I groaned. And I'm going to tell you, you know what happened? The glory of God came into that little trailer where we were. And I could hear God just as clear as I'm talking right now. And he said, son, use my name. You have a right to my name. Yes. So I began to say, in the name of Jesus, I declare victory. I bind the spirit of sickness and disease in the name, not mine, yeah. his name, yes. Jesus. Yeah. She stopped puking. It turned around that night, and she got better. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, see, I was motivated by love. Amen? Amen? And when you're motivated by love and compassion, you're going to touch God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's read the rest of this. He says, Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Did you know the right hand? Who sits on the right hand of God? Jesus. That's where our righteousness comes from. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You will seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing. As a non-existent thing. I got thinking about that. I said, God, how can that be? You know what the Lord told me? He said, son, you can walk with me to where the devil is just like a fly. We know a fly can't hurt you. 
He's called Beelzebub, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah. Lord of the flies. Hello. Yeah. What do you do if a fly comes around? Shoe fly. Don't bother me. Remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> Just shoe him. And the Lord said, you can be so established in your walk with me and knowing me and your righteousness that I've given you that Satan will be like a non-existent thing. Amen. I said, well, Lord, I'm not there yet, but I know it's available. I mean, know there's a lot of things available that we haven't walked in. But it's available. Hallelujah. He goes on and he says, For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Now, well, I could, I could really take this down another path, but I, I, I won't take the time. But I want to tell you this. You and I have got to learn to trust in the mercy of God. There are times, listen, you know, a lot of times we just struggle to have faith. Struggle, well, I'm trying to have faith. Sometimes you just need to have faith in God's mercy. Huh? Just have faith and he's merciful. Lord, help me. You ever just, just said, Lord, help me? Yeah, that's a good prayer. It's a real good prayer. Now I'll give you one more scripture here in closing in Psalms 91. Hallelujah. And Moses, we know Moses wrote Psalms 91. Beginning with verse number 1. He who dwells, notice it doesn't say visits, <laughs> in the secret place of the Most High. It's a place that's secret, but God wants to reveal it to us. It's a place under His, look at that, un, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's under the shadow of His love, people. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He, that means shelter. My fortress, that means my strong defense. My God, in Him, in Him, I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That even means if you got caught in it, folks. And from the perilous pestilence. How I many you know that means every disease? He shall cover you with his feathers as the wings of the angels. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth, listen to this, here's the key, shall be your shield and buckler. You'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the weapons that are by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Now, this whole chapter is good, but I'm going to stop there. I just thought of something. The Lord brought something to my memory. In Revelation chapter 6, there are four horses that ride. Remember that? White, red, black, and pale. Actually, the word pale means green. Okay? Those four colors. The first horse has a rider. Okay? He has a crown. And it says he has a bow in his hand. You look the word bow up. We think of this, right? Doesn't mean that at all. It means a piece of cloth. Look it up. You don't believe me. Go to Strong's. Like a ribbon or something. A piece of cloth had a piece of cloth in his hand. What we haven't put on our faces. Huh? A piece of cloth. Y'all out there? Fear. Hmm? Made me think about that. But I've got enough of God's word right here where I don't have to be afraid. 
Amen. Amen. But you can't just visit the secret place. You've got to learn to live there. Say, how, Brother Ford? We have to come back tonight unless you want to stay here another hour. Yes. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> well, I've learned, I'll just say this real quick in closing. I, I, I know that camera's on me right there. <laughs> what if I need to pray for somebody in the back? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just take away. <laughs> take away the mail, don't hold it. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> there are three things I showed you this morning. God's love. Yes. His righteousness. Yes. And that he's always with you. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've learned to walk in these things by staying in this word right here. Over and over and over again. How many of you notice that I remember as a kid when we would walk to the neighbor's house. <laughs> After a while, the grass began to die there. <laughs> you created a path. Yes. The Bible talks about paths to dwell in. You out there? Yeah. A path is a well-worn, trodden place. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm using this illustration you get it. If you continue in the word and you just stay with these scriptures and don't take a whole lot of them and you just go over them and over them, you know what happens? It becomes like a path in your heart. A well-trodden path of God. Because you've got to transform your mind by thinking the way God talks. You got to think the way he thinks because his thoughts are higher than ours. But if you take lay hold of his thoughts, then you're going to think with him. Yeah. Yeah. If you can just grasp this. But listen, the only reason we don't do it is because our minds are on too many other things. Amen. I have found out that one thing that God really likes is when people want to know him. When you say, God, I want to know you. I remember as a young man at the age of 26 years old, I think I was. The first time I was to preach in a pulpit, I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> I preached that morning, that evening. I told my wife to go home. I'm going to stay at church and pray all afternoon because I didn't do too good this morning. I want to do better tonight. And I'm kneeling between the pews and I'm praying. I said, God, you called me to preach. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, I got to preach about somebody I don't know too well. Huh? You know, preaching is like giving an introduction. I'm going to introduce John. John is a young man. I have no idea how old he is. <laughs> He pastors the church here in Wichita. And I know a little bit about John. Drives a pickup, along with some other vehicles. <laughs> but my extent of knowing him is limited. How many of you see where I'm going with this? So I'm thinking, how can I get up and preach about you? And I don't know you very well. I didn't feel qualified. And the Lord spoke to me so clear. You know what he said? He said, son, you shall know me through my word. He didn't say, I'll give you a bunch of visions, which would have been good. <laughs> he didn't say, I'm going to come to you and sit down and talk to you and teach you. Even though he does to the Holy Spirit. He said, you're going to know me through my word. Yeah. And from that day on, I had a hunger for the word of God. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. You won't walk in much faith. You won't walk in much victory. You'll still have to deal with fear if you don't fall in love with this Bible. Just being honest with you. There needs to be a revival of a love for God's word. Amen. If we're lacking, it's always a word shortage. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Amen. Because the word of God is what makes your prayer life work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to you that we don't have to fear. And Lord, whatever fear we have, 
we can drive it out. Because, Lord, it's your desire to reveal who you are to us. It's your desire that we not walk in darkness because you're the light of the world. And, Lord, just something as simple as saying a prayer will open up the door for you to come in and begin to work. So, Lord, this day, our prayer is, Lord, expose the fear that we have, whatever it is. Expose it, Lord, and bring it to the surface so that we may, with the knowledge of truth of your word and knowing your love that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, drive out that fear and conquer it and put it under our feet. In the name of Jesus, because it says in your word that things are going to happen in the world that are going to cause men's heart to fail because of fear. But Lord, we decide we want to be on your side. We want to be in the secret place uh, that Lord, evidently not many people know about. But Lord, we want to be examples of those who've been delivered and Lord, we don't, we're like Paul, we haven't arrived yet, but we're reaching for it. We're reaching for it because we know it's available. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over all fear because fear is not from you. You did not give it to us, therefore we don't have to accept it. Hallelujah. Everyone, everyone here this morning, I want you right now to take authority over any fear in your life. Say, I don't have to have fear anymore. Because Jesus set you free. And wherever you're struggling, he said, I will take your right hand and I will help you. So let him take you by the hand. Just say, Lord Jesus, lead me right on into victory. Yes. Take me out of all the fears that I have. And let me walk in that secret place. Under the shadow of your love. Hallelujah. And Lord, I command fear to be broken. We loose it from us in the name of Jesus. And say, no, we don't have to accept it anymore. For your love, your love is greater than any fear. You love us with an exceeding great and precious love. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now we'll just keep your heads bowed for a moment. If you're here this morning and you're not right with God, you know if you are or not. The Bible says his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're his children. If you don't have that inward witness, you're just a prayer away from becoming right with God. Open your heart to him this morning. Don't shut him out. Don't turn away from whatever he's wanting to give you and do in you and for you. Let him come in by just a simple prayer. Just tell him, Lord, I surrender to you. Just surrender to Jesus this morning. So, Lord, I surrender to you. I need you in my life. <clears throat> I need your forgiveness. I need the spirit of power and not of fear. Ask him. He'll come in. He'll make you righteous. He'll restore what you've lost. He's ready right now. Just pray that prayer right at your seat. Lord, we receive what you did. And we believe that your death paid the price 
for me to be restored. The price of redemption has been met. Satan, you've lost your power. Jesus has purchased me. I'm no longer a slave to you, Satan, but I'm now a child of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray your blessing now on every person here. Father, cause them to know how much you love them. In the name of Jesus, Father, release that spirit of love of righteousness and a sense of knowing that we're right with you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to just share this real quickly. God has been really downloading so many wonderful things to my spirit that are what I call now words for the body of Christ. And how many of you have ever prayed for a breakthrough? Okay. Well, the Lord showed me that he has a unique way of giving us and he really can't call it a breakthrough. But I'll, this is the key, okay? This is the word we're going to look at tonight. Overcome. Amen. How many know overcome is different from breakthrough? Yeah. How many of you see that? Yeah. Breakthrough, overcome. Come on, you out there? Yeah. Some of you have been trying to get a breakthrough and God says, I want you to overcome. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. God bless you.